Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, more information on pollution at Fish Trap Lake. Good evening, I'm Gary Sloan. And I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. Last night, we told you about a major sewage spill in Virginia that has been polluting the Levisa Fort for two months. Tonight, we have a follow-up to that story. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins spent the morning with U.S. Army Corps of Engineers officials at Fish Trap Lake. She brings us this report. The raw sewage flowing into Kentucky from Buchanan County, Virginia via the Levisa Fork has several different government agencies on alert. On Tuesday, the Kentucky Department of Environmental Protection was notified by Virginia officials that millions of gallons of raw sewage has been flowing into the river since March. And the fact that that river empties into Fish Trap Lake has officials with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers monitoring the lake daily for signs of contamination. As of yesterday, we're doing a daily patrol of the lake, specifically looking for plumes, changes in the water conditions, or in any fish kill. Crews are riding the length of the 16 and a half mile lake daily, but Holbrook says just seeing one or two dead fish isn't necessarily a reason to be alarmed. I think we see a number of fish, maybe a dozen fish, or a particular species, because as you know, the fish uh, uh, tend to habitat different thermoclines. So if we see bottom dwelling fish that, uh, you know, may be, may be floating, may be dead, then that, that's when we'll, we'll raise an alarm and we'll let fish and wildlife know. In addition to those monitoring the lake itself, many communities who get their water downstream from the Fish Trap Lake spillway, such as Pikeville, Prestonsburg, and Paintsville, are also monitoring the river more closely. However, Holbrook said they have the capability to be very selective on the water that is released. Generally, the water coming in that would be coming in in the headwaters will be cooler than the water that's in the body of the lake itself, and it would tend to uh, settle out to the bottom and slowly mix. And that gives it some time uh, for the uh, dilution factor to kick in, and then we can uh, also uh, take our water discharge from the higher levels in that thermocline using those selective withdrawal gates and, and help mitigate uh, any bacteria or things that may, you know, may go down the river. And to make the situation worse, nobody knows when that sewage spill will end. It started during the March flooding when manhole covers were displaced, allowing large amounts of debris to fill more than 700 feet of Buchanan County, Virginia's main line, causing flow to the treatment plant to be blocked. And as of yesterday, only 200 feet had been cleared. In the meantime, Fish Trap Lake officials are urging boaters and fishermen to give them a call if they notice any signs of contamination. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. A federal lawsuit filed this week accuses three current and former members of the West Virginia Athletic Commission of 61 acts of racketeering. The commission oversees fighting sports in the state. However, according to the lawsuit filed by Christopher McCorkle Smith and ACR Promotions, Members of the commission have focused their attention on personal gain and graft. Smith and ACR promote tough man competitions such as the rough and rowdy brawl. In their lawsuit, they accuse current and former commissioners Stephen A. Allred, Douglas E. Pauley, and Brian Simpson of forcing fight promoters to hire the defendant's family and friends as fight officials, even when additional officials were unnecessary and often at rates of up to four times the legal rate. The lawsuit also accuses the defendants of forcing promoters to give them ringside seats, which in turn were given to the defendants, friends, family, business associates, and political connections. The lawsuit states that a February 2014 event at the Williamson Fieldhouse illustrates thorough and persuasive corruption. Plaintiffs say they were forced to hire seven officials at rates two and three times the legal rate, and one of the officials demanded 10 guest passes worth $200 each. Smith and ACR are asking for $1.4 million in damages. Attempts to reach the commission were unsuccessful. Stephen Allred refused to comment, saying he is no longer affiliated with the commission. 18 months after emerging from bankruptcy, Patriot Coal is filing for Chapter 11 protection again. The company is citing low energy prices as the reason for its continued financial troubles. CEO Bob Bennett said the company's board reviewed alternatives and felt bankruptcy was the best option. 
This time, Patriot says it's in negotiations with a potential buyer. Patriot has 11 active Appalachian mining companies employing 2,900 people and 1.4 billion tons in reserves. In a statement, UMWA President Cecil Roberts said the union is watching the filing and plans to fight for retirees' pension and health benefits. During its earlier restructuring, an appeals court ruled Peabody, which spun off Patriot in 2007, was not obligated to continue health benefits for 3,100 retirees. A Johnson County man convicted in a 2010 federal drug conspiracy case is in trouble again, this time charged with violating the terms of his release. James R. Pennington was sentenced to 18 months in prison after pleading guilty to conspiracy to distribute oxycodone. Pennington admitted to taking part in a scheme with five others to travel to Florida to obtain and fill prescriptions for roxycodone and roxacet and bring their pills back to eastern Kentucky. He got out of prison in 2012 and began five years of supervised release. Among the terms of his release, Pennington was forbidden to use alcohol or have further violations of the law. Pennington ran into trouble with his supervision earlier this month when he was arrested for DUI and failure to maintain insurance. He was reportedly in possession of alcohol at the time of his arrest. At a hearing earlier this week, U.S. Magistrate Judge Edward B. Atkins found probable cause that Pennington violated the terms of his release and set a final revocation hearing for next week in London. In honor of National Police Officers Week, Kentucky State Police Post 9 in Pikeville memorialized fallen troopers today. KSP placed wreaths on each gravesite of those who were being recognized. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele attended the ceremonies and filed this report. Kentucky State Police Post 9 in Pikeville honored fallen troopers today by presenting wreaths at the burial site of each one. Friends, family, and co-workers of each fallen trooper were invited to attend the ceremonies. Trooper Stephen Mounts with Kentucky State Police says this is a tribute to fallen KSP troopers as well as the family members who have suffered. It lets the family members know uh, that although they may not be with us, uh, they are not forgotten and we bring the reefs with us just to lay as a ceremony uh, to show appreciation for them. 28-year-old Trooper Jonathan Leonard was involved in a two-vehicle crash on US-119 at Sydney in Pike County. Leonard's mother, Karen Leonard, attended the ceremony and feels honored that her son is remembered every year by KSP. It means that he's not forgotten, and it's not just him, but it's all police officers you know, that were killed in the line of duty. They do this annually, and it's just laying the wreath at all the fallen officers' uh, memorial. They go around to all of the grave sites. Some of the grave sites they even help clean off and then just place a, a, a wreath in their memory. Trooper Leonard was assigned to Post 9 and served with KSP for three years before his accident. Trooper Leonard's family offers a $10,000 scholarship each year to a graduating senior in Trooper Leonard's name. Karen says this is something Trooper Leonard would have wanted. Now my family knows that it's something that Jonathan would want to do for this community because he did love his community where he came from. He loved Belfry. So we have a scholarship there every year in his memory. Similar tributes were also given to two other Post 9 troopers who were killed in the line of duty, Jerome Clifton and Johnny Atkins. In addition, five other troopers who died of causes not related to their service were also honored. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. Well, coming up, a historic battlefield will get a cleanup. Mm -hmm. And the city of Pikeville is putting forward its best face for some guests this week. We'll tell you more about it in two minutes. The city of Pikeville is in the spotlight this week. Tourism officials from across Kentucky are meeting here this week and getting a taste of what the city has to offer. EKB News reporter Courtney Lovren has been following this story and brings us this report. From meetings to free food to an evening on Main Street that was so vibrant it had the mayor dancing, the Kentucky Travel Industry Spring Travel Forum had plenty of events on its agenda that showcased Pikeville's attractions and history. 
This is the first time that the three-day conference has been held east of Louisville and the city of Pikeville has worked for two years to get the conference to the growing mountain city. We're following back to back with SOAR and this conference of course is our spring forum for 2015. We have educational sessions that go along with our certification and our goal here is to highlight Pikeville Pike County while they're here. As Miss Judy Patton, our chair lady would say, uh, we're not done yet, we have more to do. Tourism representatives and workers from all around the state took part in the conference and were able to see what Pikeville Tourism offers as they were granted access to the Hatfield and McCoy tours, the new zip line, and other local attractions. Yesterday evening, they were treated to a private 50s themed block party at the Billy Johnson stage outside of the East Kentucky Expo Center, supplied with free horse carriage rides and other entertainment. I think it's awesome. I had no idea anything like this happened in Pikeville. I've never been to Pikeville, so I'm really impressed by the downtown. I mean, it's beautiful. There's people walking around, people on bikes, music. I mean, it's so lively here. I had no idea, so. The conference also provides an economic boost to the city. Oh my goodness, uh, you, you can talk about conferences and conventions and motor coaches, but when you have a conference come into your area and can spend ten to $15,000 a day in your area on lodging and meals and preparations for those, uh, you've done something right. These people leave Eastern Kentucky talking about Eastern Kentucky and our region, and no amount of money can buy that marketing. Pikeville's charm rubbed off on some of the tourism visitors during their time here. I just took a carriage ride actually with the Dream Stables folks and they took us around downtown and it's so charming here, I love it. Reporting for EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Levering. The Friends of Middle Creek will be observing Park Day on Saturday by hosting a cleanup at the Middle Creek National Battlefield on that day. Park Day is a nationally coordinated effort to clean and beautify Civil War battle sites. This year's National Park Day was held March 28th, but it was postponed locally due to flooding and severe weather. Those who'd like to take part in the cleanup are asked to meet in the Battlefield parking lot located near the junction of Routes 114 and 404 at 9 in the morning and bring a pair of gloves and a trash bag if you can. The Friends of Middle Creek will provide lunch and refreshments following the work. Three the Floyd County School District became the first in the region to offer an early college academy in which students can attend college during their final two years of high school and graduate with both a diploma and an associate's degree. During the next school year, Floyd County will offer another first. Recently, Floyd County School Superintendent Dr. Henry Webb and Big Sandy Interim President Dr. Charles Cressman signed an agreement creating the region's first early college academy devoted solely to the information technology. Beginning in August, the IT Early College Academy will give 10 students a chance to earn a degree in information technology during their junior and senior years of high school. Dr. Cressman said the new innovation and the early college concept will be a good fit with the SOAR initiatives, concentrating on bringing high-tech jobs to the region through high-speed broadband. Well, coming up, a local athlete is getting looks from some big-name programs. Andrew Joyce will be in here to tell us who. Well, but first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with our weather forecast. We'll be back in two minutes. Lathan, I gotta say, we really almost started a movement to do this whole broadcast outside today. Well, I didn't know that was an option. Maybe <laughs> tomorrow. The only difference tomorrow will be we may have to dodge a couple of raindrops. Unfortunately, that's not the case right now, though. The Doppler radar is nice and quiet and dry across all of eastern and southeastern Kentucky. Same goes from western West Virginia into southwest Virginia. Satellite and radar composite, though, yes, you will notice the cloud cover is beginning to move closer and closer to the region. We had a few of those higher level clouds move through during the day, seeing a little bit of a break in the cloud cover, at least for now, but more clouds and yes, a few showers trying to develop and move from western parts of Kentucky off to the north and to the east. I really think this first band that you see here will completely fall apart by the time it makes its way here into our region. As far as what it looks like outside with these clouds moving through, 
I can show you by taking a look outside the station right here at East Kentucky Broadcasting in Pikeville. Temperature 77 degrees. A little more in the way of cloud cover in West Liberty. This is the West Liberty Elementary School. Current temperature thanks to the more extensive cloud cover. A little cooler at 71 degrees. Elsewhere across the region we have 75 in Inez, 79 in Logan. 74 in Prestonsburg, 75 in Paintsville, 73 in Sawyersville, and 71. The current temperature right now in Dorton, as a matter of fact. The high today went down in the record books at 76 degrees, officially at the National Weather Service office in Jackson. The low 48. Now, this is pretty close to where we should be this time of the year, but those 40s, thing of the past now. I think we'll be back in the 50s for overnight lows tonight and maybe in the 60s over the next couple of nights. The record high, 89, it was set back in 1982 and 36 in 1996. We're now well over two inches of rain below average for the month of May, but still about oh, five and a quarter inches above average for the year. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 626 and sunset at 826. All right, the satellite and radar composite across the entire eastern half of the country. Notice all the cloud cover stretching from the Great Lakes to the Gulf Coast. This is an area of low pressure that will move to the northeast, but as it does so, it's kind of going to put the brakes on. And as it does so, we will have a daily threat of those showers and storms. I think the best chance, unfortunately, will hold off until the weekend. I'll show you that with the seven-day forecast here in just a second. This is one of the computer forecasting models taking us from late tonight through to the, the day tomorrow and even tomorrow night. You can see a couple of showers tomorrow morning, but all in all, this uh, computer forecasting model saying, Keep things relatively dry for tomorrow. Still going to throw in at least a 40% chance of those showers and storms developing, of course, with the heating of the day. And that, of course, is the afternoon and evening hours. Pollen count for today, sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville. For tomorrow, 8.6 out of a possible 12. And then a little lower as we head into the weekend. Why is that? Well, that explains the seven-day forecast. 50% chance of rain Saturday, Sunday, Temperatures in the low 80s again on Monday, but early next week into the middle part of next week, we cool back down. I think we'll be in the upper 60s, low 70s again by Wednesday, and then right back up we go as far as the temperatures are concerned during the day on Thursday. And you can find a detailed forecast in tomorrow's edition of the Appalachian News Express. All right. Thank you, Lane. Mm -hmm. And we'll be back in two minutes. Well, the Reds uh, continue to win. That's a good thing. It is a good thing. Wrapping up a series win over the Braves and now, of course, taking on the Giants at Great American Ballpark. Big series coming up for Cincinnati. Absolutely. Before we get to the Reds, ESPN is reporting that the third annual Big 12 SEC Challenge in basketball will feature a midseason meeting between college basketball's two winningest programs, UK and Kansas, to be played in Lawrence on January 30th. The last time Kentucky played at Kansas was in 2006, and before that was in 1989 when the Wildcats lost by 50 during Rick Pitino's first season as a coach. The Wildcats lead the overall series against Kansas 21-6 and are 3-0 versus the Jayhawks during the Calipari era. The other games included in the Big 12 SEC Challenge are Texas Tech versus Arkansas, Oklahoma State takes on Auburn, West Virginia will meet Florida, Georgia meets Baylor, Oklahoma takes on LSU, Ole Miss will battle Kansas State, Tennessee takes on Texas Christian, Iowa State meets Texas A&M, and Vandy will be at Texas. And in Reds action last night, Cincinnati hosting the Braves in the series wrap-up. Already on top, 1-0 in the bottom of the second. Marlon Byrd rips this fastball over the left field wall. Make it 2-0. Reds, Marlon Byrd five home runs in his last 10 games. We go to the bottom of the third. Todd Frazier hits this shot to center field, high and deep. It's deep enough for his 12th dinger of the year, leading the National League along with Bryce Harper. Plenty of offense for the Reds last night at Great America Ballpark for rookie starter, Rysel Iglesias. Remember the name. He took a no-hitter to the sixth and a shutout to the eighth. 
Iglesias struck out five, allowing just one run on two hits and eight innings pitched for his first major league win. The final, Reds five, Braves one. The Reds will take on the Giants tonight at 7-10 at Great American Ballpark to kick off their four-game series. Both teams currently hold a record of 17 and 17. And the recruiting war is on for Paintsville linebacker Cash Daniel. Daniel currently has 12 Division I offers. Last week, he received a visit from Ohio State, and this morning, coaches from the Florida Gators watched him work out. Michaela and Colley got the chance to speak with Cash Daniel. Paintsville Tigers have begun their spring training for the 2015 season. Junior Cash Daniel has become a top prospect for the upcoming football season. Since we spoke with him last, he has received his fourth star and is now ranked eighth in the country. You know, rankings are rankings. It's all about if you can play or not. It's, it's, it's probably not going to lie. It's pretty cool. You know, let's say you're a number eight in the nation, but you know, there's different recruiting sites saying different. You know, so don't. I don't let it get to me that much. Ford was here today, so hopefully that coach Ford uh, liked what he saw. Cash believes him and his team are making the necessary adjustments needed to improve for the upcoming season. You know, we've improved as a team, you know, just by our work ethic. You know, last year we had a couple, we had like most of the guys are committed. Everybody was, you know, here and there, but now this year I think everybody's all in. And, you know, one to win a state championship, so I think we've improved this together as a team. Head coach Joe Chirico is confident in the Tigers' abilities to build a better team altogether. We're a work in progress, and we're ahead of where we were last year with the spring ball and what we've done, so I think, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. With the recent uprising attention towards Cash and his athletic ability, Coach Chirico says Cash has always been a leader for the team. He, he's always been a leader, even when he was a young kid. This group of kids are a special group, and he's always been a leader for them. And uh, there's a bunch of leaders in this group, and he just adds to that mix. The good Lord blessed him with a lot of athletic ability, and he spent a lot of time in the weight room honing his craft. Cash is continuing his process of being recruited. We will keep you updated on his journey to the next level. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Michaela Cauley. Thanks, Michaela. In high school baseball yesterday evening, South Floyd took on Breathitt County. The Raiders came out on top 4-1 to and improved to 11-14 and on the season. Belfry faced Prestonsburg and held on for a 9-8 win over the Black Cats. Tonight on the high school baseball schedule, Sheldon Clark is at Belfry. Not Central travels to Eastridge. Betsy Lane will face Jenkins. Pike Central goes to Letcher County Central. Allen Central will be on the road to McGoffin County. Lawrence County's Bulldogs at the Hambly Complex to face Pikeville. Johnson Central will be at Prestonsburg and Shelby Valley travels to South Floyd. On the softball diamond last night, the East Ridge Lady Warriors picked up two wins, a doubleheader sweep, 5-4 over Grundy and 6-3 over Hayside. Tonight on the softball diamonds, the Shelby Valley Lady Backcats take on Allen Central. Hayside travels to Jenkins. Buckhorn will be at Pike Central to face the Lady Hawks. Betsy Lane's Lady Bobcats on the road to Pikeville for senior night, and Phelps will be at Prestonsburg. I tell you, we've got to be proud of Cash Daniel. Absolutely. That's huge. What a great kid, great athlete, and of course, a local kid uh, bringing national uh, coaches to our area, and the recruiting process, I think, will continue. Seems to be handling it well. He does. And we'll be back in two minutes. Well, a nice evening tonight, but mm -hmm. maybe a shower tomorrow? Tomorrow, the rain chances begin to move back into the region. 40% chance of rain for tomorrow. Not as chilly tomorrow morning for those folks that's been over the past couple of mornings. We've had temperatures in the mid and upper 40s. Well, tomorrow morning, 58 degrees and a high of 83. Mm, okay. And we've got an encore performance of Sports Guys. How about that? It's coming up tonight at 7. We'll talk about Tom Brady and Deflate Gate on that and trash talk. Little trash talk, huh? Amongst the younger guys. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that will do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can also follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. We leave you tonight with a little walk through the woods. Good night. Thanks for watching.